Hi, this is Justin with Whiting Services Heating and Air Conditioning. Today we have a Utica gas-fired hot water boiler. This is a 90% high efficiency boiler. Uh, this boiler has several issues. Uh, main issue is the uh, induction blower is not working uh, the control board is sending power to the fan and the fan is not running uh, this is a combination uh, induction blower assembly with a negative pressure gas valve so gas valve bolts right to uh, the blower and it pulls uh, air right through like a little venturi um, and then pulls the gas in uh, mixes it and then sends it on in to the burner um, got the new one over there and uh, I'm gonna be swapping that out um, that process entails uh, removing some screws on the uh, gas valve assembly um, removing these bolts back here Allen keys there's four of them um, and I believe that's it I've done a few of these before these are basically kind of the weak link in uh, these Utica Boilers. That's the part that I always see going. Uh, aside from the uh, the uh, hot surface igniter, uh, they tend to go a lot too on these boilers. Um, this particular boiler saw a couple other problems while I was here. Uh, expansion tank. You can see it's not supported in any way. Uh, when they put them on sideways like that, uh, especially the bigger tanks, they really should put some kind of support band and hang it from the overhead, anything, um, to support that weight. Uh, especially if the diaphragm fails inside the tank, uh, floods the tank, and then it's even heavier, and it has a heavy downward pull in the tank, and it can actually uh, pull the tank right off that little fitting there, especially if it has uh, some rust and corrosion which this one does this tank definitely looks like it's getting ready to come off and i actually checked the little schrader valve in the back there um this guy you want to depress that little uh core and you should get air pressure out of there if you have a good diaphragm i did press it and i got nothing so um didn't get water typically when you have a ruptured diaphragm you'll get water didn't get water. Instead, I got nothing. So, um, could just be that the valve is bad and the pressure uh, released. So, in any event, that tank needs to be replaced and really should be um, installed differently. We like to hang our tanks um, straight up and down uh, so they don't have that problem. Uh, let's see. I believe that's all that I saw was going on here. Might be some issues down there with the condensate. But uh, I'm going to get started on this uh, fan and at least get the boiler operational because it's about to get really cold this week. So uh, first steps uh, after you kill power and let's see. Shut off gas here. Uh, it's going to be removing uh, these bolts. There's two of them. One's here, uh, and it is a Torx head. Uh, let's see what size it is. Looks like. T25. So the T25 Torx, there's two of them. There's one here, and there's one around the back. It's tough to get to. 
Um, I typically use my uh, snake driver flexible tip uh, to get around back there, connect it to my gun. Uh, works pretty good. Uh, I got it de disconnected now, so those two are off. Uh, going to disconnect wire. Uh, let's see. Sometimes this little guy is in the way. Um, I'm going to leave it there for now. I may have to take that off. Um, next steps are uh, Allen key for bolts. And sometimes you can use uh, ratchet style. Um, a lot easier sometimes. But getting to that back bottom guy down here is tough. That's the toughest one, I think, to get to. Um, and that's going to be a 532nd Allen key. So I'm going to get on that now and see if I can pull this baby out. Okay, so as you can see, I got the old one out of there. And uh, once you get the bolts off, it just kind of pops right off, you know, it sits on there, and uh, you just pop it right out of there, easy, just like that, and uh, you see there's a little rubber gasket, peel that off, throw it away, they give you a new one, comes with a little goodie bag, and they also give you a new gasket for uh, the new fan uh, just goes on right there and uh, sometimes you can stick that gasket on with a little little dope uh, help hold it in place when you're trying to stick it but you don't typically need it I don't think we're gonna need it we'll see Seems to me like it would be a better idea to put the gasket over here. Um, it might stay in place, I think, a little better when I go to put the new one on. I'm going to do that. So what I'm going to do now is take my new, my new guy. Just kind of get it on in there. Like so. And what I'm really trying to do right now is uh, line up my holes here. I can get those screws in. Not worry too much about the top flange yet. I know that this whole thing will move. Um, 
Well, those hose clamps weren't even tight. Uh, all right, so I'm gonna put you down and uh, see if I can get those screws in my other hand, and uh, I'll be back. Okay, I'm back and uh, got my new motor in, my fan assembly, and we're up and running. Um, All I did was uh, <clears throat> hit these two guys, the two, uh, these two bolts with the impact on a couple times, got them nice and snug, and then uh, put my four bolts in uh, there on the flange. Uh, a little tricky sometimes getting that one in. Uh, this flange on in the back, there's a rubber gasket that's got to go in. And um, with that one, um, I usually just try to get one bolt in through the flange. Um, usually this guy up here first. And then after that, I try to get the other side in at the top. And then I'm pretty much lined up. The hardest one is that one way down there. Uh, the bottom right. It's the hardest one to get in lined up. And usually I have to kind of just hold the whole fan assembly and just move it a little to the left while my other hand is back around kind of twisting um, to line up the bolt and uh, a little bit of patience and it will go in um, don't try to force anything just uh, take your time with it and uh, you know when you're tightening down just go you know a good star pattern you know do the top over here and then the bottom over there Top up here, bottom over there, you know, and then work your way around. Get everything nice and snug. Don't over tighten, strip it out, and don't leave it too loose. That's definitely uh, something you don't want to leave loose right there. Uh, don't want to damage that gasket. Uh, that's pretty much it. Get it nice and snug, work your way around, make sure uh, you don't leave any loose. Because as you're tightening one side, the other side can come loose. So definitely check it. Um, always check these bands over here, make sure they're nice and tight. Um, that's pretty much it. Uh, reconnected our wire, of course, and just a Molex plug. Um, before you fire up, just check all your hoses, make sure none of them got pulled off while you were working. Uh, and that's basically it. Before you leave, do a uh, combustion analysis and carbon monoxide check always want to do that for everything you touch and uh, I think that's gonna be it for this job and uh, we're on to the next one give us a call for any of your residential or commercial heating and air conditioning needs thank you very much and have a great day